In this section of our tutorial, we're going to begin taking a look at the warping technology that is so crucial to the success of Ableton Live. Now what warping technology really is, is based on a technique called granular resynthesis. Now in granular resynthesis, I'm going to take a look at a sound wave and break it out into very tiny chunks or tiny grains of sound, and hence the name granular resynthesis. Then what happens is, if we need to slow this file down, we'll add in little grains here and there to make it take more time, and if those grains are matched nicely, we won't even notice that it's been slowed down. And if it's been sped up, we have to actually choose which grains of sound to pull out that might not be noticed. So that's granular resynthesis. Now, granular resynthesis opens up so much for us, it's amazing. One of the main things that we can do in Ableton Live that is so powerful is immediately speed up or slow down any collection of clips we have so they can be audio or MIDI. And those audio clips can be from a variety of different sources, each running at different tempos or speeds originally. And we can plop them into Ableton Live and it will sync them into place for us. So we can change the tempo or speed of an individual clip or an entire collection of those clips. We can also keep them synced together as we change the tempo. We can also apply a groove or swing feel to them and we see this parameter down here in the main clip box. We can correct the timing of a performance isn't exactly right or we can use that same technique we're going to use for correcting timing for altering the timing to try and create new or funky ways to hear a, a clip. So, as we do this, again, we're going to have several different techniques of granular resynthesis. One that works best for beat-based waveforms or clips. Tone steady sounds like trumpets, flutes, saxophones, etc. Texture or synth pad type sounds. We're going to skip down to complex, which is great for complete mixes. And then repitch is another way of changing the speed of a waveform but it's one that does not use granular resynthesis. Now let's take a look at and try to get a grasp around time signature. Now to do that we're going to start by looking at this clip up here called quarter. And if you don't see it down here then just double click on quarter and it will make sure you can see it in this display. Now we're going to talk about a time signature that is the most common in all pop music and that is 4-4. Four, four. What do these two numbers mean? We kind of need to know this to get the most out of granular resynthesis. First of all, the upper number tells us how many beats there are in each group for this song. So let's listen. We'll have four in this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So as it repeats over and over, it keeps that grouping of fours together. Now even if we subdivide or add little extra beats in between, it's not going to really change the pulse that we would be dancing to. Let's listen. And now sixteenths. Okay, so what we're doing now is adding subdivisions in between the beats and that has to be understood based on this other lower number. The four tells us that basically if we were reading music that it would take us something called a quarter note to fill up each beat. Hence the name for this first one, quarter. We can see one drum strike for every beat. One one, one two, measure one third beat, measure one fourth beat, etc. If we have eighth notes, that means we have two or cut the four in half and we get an eighth. So instead of one fourth, now it takes an eighth note to take two eighth notes to fill up a beat. One first part, one second part, one, two, first part, one, two, second part, etc. Now if we go into the sixteenth, and again I'm just clicking on these, we can see we have four subdivisions to each beat. Two, one, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, one, two, three, etc. So even though these have slower or faster feels, so even if we were dancing to this and we went from quarter notes to eighth notes, the main pulse for dancing is still one, two, three, four. And again, sixteenths add more in between each beat. Three, four, one, two. But the pulse we dance to would still be the same. Okay, so that's a basic understanding of four, four. And again, 
this is going to be the most common time signature for any waveforms or audio clips you bring in so you can keep that in place as you listen to your music and you can try to tell whether it's eighth notes sixteenth notes you can set your swing groove parameter here in the clip box to match so this one is at sixteenths so its groove needs to be at sixteenths this one that has eighth notes inside should have its swing set to eighth and it is and then quarter only has quarter now let's take a quick listen to swing eighth I'm going to play this one and here's our global swing or groove every other one is being delayed so again that's part of that warp technology that not only lets us speed up and slow down things but apply a global swing feel or groove feel to anything we might be playing okay now we're going to pick up in our next section talking about the different types of warping